Like you, I only have a uh, passing knowledge of Scientology. I know Tom Cruise is in Scientology. I know uh, Johnny Travolta is there. I know Jeff Henderson is there. Scientology is a hotbed of activity in Milford. I know my producer, Matt Steinman, is a Scientologist. Do they believe in Jesus Christ? Do they believe uh, L. Rod Hubbard and Dianetics is circling the planet in a spaceship? I don't know. We have an expert coming up in about eight minutes. Chris Shelton is going to be here. He spent 27 years as a Scientologist. What do they believe? What is the... By Billy Cunningham, the great American, like you, like uh, many here uh, who are Scientologists, including Jeff Henderson, Scientology is a hotbed of activity in Milford. Many of us have wondered for a long time exactly, you know, what is Scientology? Chris Shelton spent 27 years of his life as a Scientologist. He's going to speak tomorrow night at Newport on the Levee. And uh, Chris Shelton, welcome to, the Bill, uh, welcome to the Bill Cunningham Show. Well, thank you. Tell me, what is Scientology? Is it a religion? Is it a cult? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in uh, the prophet? Do, what do you believe in if you're a Scientologist? All right. Well, Scientologist is a destructive cult, and uh, and there are specific things that make it a cult, such as the black and white thinking, us versus them sort of mentality, that that kind of thing, right? And it and it is a, and it is a cult because it creates and enforces a prison of belief on its members, and it uh, and it basically exists to make money. Let's, so, bre- let's break it down. Uh, L. Ron yep. Hubbard kind of started it. He's like the Jesus Christ of Scientology, or is he Muhammad? Yeah, no, he, he's, he is the Jesus Christ. He's the founder, he's the source, he's the guy who, who you have to believe every word he ever said. Where is L. Ron Hubbard now? Oh, he died. He died in what? 1986. And when he died, did he go somewhere? Uh, well, they, you know, <laughs> his ashes were scattered to the ocean. He, uh, he is said to have gone on to further spiritual research, but, uh, but he actually died in a, in a pretty bad way, and, uh, and Scientologists generally don't, don't really know that. And he wrote a book called Dianetics, correct? That's right, in 1950. Now, what did, di- is Dianetics like the Bible to a Scientologist? It, it, it's sort of it's called book one, and it's it's the first of many books that Hubbard wrote, and it was the called it was called Dianetics: The Modern Science of Mental Health, hmm. and it originally was not set up as a religion; it was set up as a science, and it was it was one hundred percent pseudoscience, but it used fancy words like axioms and you know logics and uh, laws and things like that to set itself up as though it was a um, a challenger to uh, psychiatry and psychology, which Hubbard was was trying to get into, and uh, and that didn't work out so well for him. Within the first couple of years, it, it took off like a storm, and then it it uh, it was a shooting star. It took off, and then it then it faded out and went bankrupt. And out of the ashes of that is where Scientology came from. Do Scientologists believe in a in a one person God? Uh, not really. Scientology doesn't address the subject of God directly. It sort of leaves it up to the individual as to how they understand God. It's much more about the individual as a spiritual being and uh, trying to make that individual into a godlike figure. Do they believe in, like, heaven, hell, and purgatory? No, they don't. So there's in no fact, heaven, there's they, no they, hell? No, and in fact, quite the opposite. They they very much don't believe in those things. What do they believe, and then happens after you die? Well, they believe that a person, uh, as a spiritual being, goes on from life to life to life, taking on another body and another body and another body. So it's reincarnation. It, it is. But Hindus believe you might be a salamander, and then a fish, and then a bird, and then a human. And if things don't go well, you go backwards in time. You might become, if you're a bad human, you become a bird. And then after a bad bird, you become a fish. Then you become a salamander. And then you become a paramecium. You keep going up and down. Do, right. do, do they believe, do Scientologists believe that if you're a good human being like John Travolta or, or Tom Cruise or Kelly Preston, that uh, you become a better human being and more rich and powerful the next time around? 
Uh, the idea is actually to, it's more of the uh, Buddhist idea. It's, it's not Buddhism, but the idea is more of a release from the entire need to continue in the endless cycle of life after life. That's what they sort of are promising to achieve within one lifetime. Hubbard promised that he had methodologies worked out with that could free you from that endless cycle uh, within one lifetime. Now, you're going to break that down. That's a little quick. Now, Chris Shelton, yep. l- let's yep. say you're a really good Scientologist. You follow all the yep. rules and you die. What happens? Well, as, as, as you see, the thing about Scientology is you're supposed to be achieving higher and higher levels of spiritual awareness through Scientology procedures so that you have a choice as to what you're going to do when you die. Go back to another body or go on to do whatever it is you would care to do. All right, now, uh, what's the name of the guy in charge? Is it McCavage, something like that? Yeah, his name is David Miscavige. Miscavige. Now, this, yeah. this guy has been around 25 or 30 years. Describe what happens to a Scientologist if you say to the leaders, you know what, I don't believe it anymore. I'm not giving you 10 or 20% of what I make. My kids aren't going <laughs> to believe it anymore, and I'm out. What happens? Well, if you go quietly, they tend to leave you alone. But if you do something like what I did or what others have done when you speak out publicly, they come after you. The um, Hubbard himself had a really bad issue with criticism, with receiving criticism. He couldn't deal with it. And he wrote it into the policies of the organization that if if that organization is attacked in any way, uh, that you are to go after those people, and the words he used are ruin them utterly. You are to, yeah, ruin them, and that is professionally and personally. You are to go after them, and uh, they will investigate you. They send private investigators after you. It's a whole thing. Well, talk about your experience. You were in it for 27 years. Why did you decide to leave? I left because I found out that it was basically, and it seems kind of odd that it took me that long to figure this out, but it took me a while, it took me a while to figure out that it was really nothing but a money making scam. And, and it actually got worse through the years that I was in. When I first was involved with it, it seemed like it was much more oriented toward helping people and toward doing what it said it was trying to do. And as the years went on and as Miscavige's uh, rain sort of went longer and longer. It became more and more obvious that the only thing it was interested in was taking people's money. And I, that really turned me off. And, and the day that I, uh, decided I needed to leave was the day that I realized that I was actually telling more lies than I was telling truth. And so, that so what happened when you said, okay, right well, you're not exactly Tom Cruise or Johnny Travolta. But uh, no. but uh, but you're you're a person with a valuable life, at least to you and your family and friends. When you decided yes. to leave, what happened? Well, I did the. I was working for the clergy of the of Scientology, which is called the Sea Organization. S E A. The Sea is in the ocean. The Sea Organization, which is a sort of a paramilitary group, and I decided that I didn't want to work for that group anymore, and I. Uh, followed the procedures that you follow to leave, and I and I left that organization, but I still believed in the subject of Scientology. And uh, the problem was that I was sort of, since I had left the sea organization, the clergy, I was sort of regarded as a second-class citizen, and I started kind of being persecuted by the church. How? Uh, well, they were saying that I couldn't contact any Scientology friends, I couldn't go into any of the churches or take part in any of the services. I couldn't do, you know, they were bad-mouthing me and ruining my reputation to people that I had known and worked with. And they were basically trying to make my life pretty pretty miserable. And they were succeeding. And uh, I didn't like that. And so I then turned to the Internet to sort of find out what, what was going on. And that's when I found out just how bad that organization actually was. I had not been on the internet very much prior to that because it's frowned upon within Scientology to look at anything bad about Scientology. Now, when you're in the group, how much money do you have to give? Oh, hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not if not millions, uh, you know, is, is when you get down to it. Well, what if you don't have it? What if you're just a working schlep and you make 30, well, they, 40... They, 
Yeah, they, they have you mortgage your house, second mortgage your house, get loans. They'll, they, they will strip you uh, of every penny they can get out of you for as long as they can. So even if you're a working schlep, you have credit card limits, you have value yep. in your home, second mortgages, home equity. They make you yep. max everything out and give them the money in order to stay as a part of the group. That's exactly right. And they are endlessly on you for donations, constantly on you for them. What about you? Tell me your experience. Well, I was a staff member for the organization, which means I was sort of on the other end of that. And so as a staff member, you're not making any money. It's, it's, it's not an exaggeration to call it slave labor because you are literally making pennies an hour. Uh, when, you, when I worked for the clergy, they handle your food, they handle your room and board and all that. And so I didn't have to deal with any of those things. I just worked for the church. And uh, because I was making, at most, $50 a week, uh, I didn't really have any savings or anything to, you know, to, to take off or anything. And so I just, can, you know, was working for the organization. And so, so when you're working for them, they're not necessarily taking all your money. They're just taking all your time and your life. So you work for the group, and so any money you were paid, the Scientologists took those, took those dollars too. Oh, yeah. So how does this how does this group stay in business? I mean, you would think you'd chase people away. There's no theology. There's no belief. Well, there is a very intense belief system. In fact, it's kind of complicated and a little hard to explain. It's a gradual process. They get you in through you know they 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 find something about your personality or something about yourself that you want to change or improve. They promise you that they can change or improve it. They give you some service or some counseling that gives you some apparency of change or improvement, you then get hooked into it, and gradually you then do the next service and the next service, and each service costs gradually more and more and more money until you're sucked into this belief system that you've gradually accepted bit by bit. They don't throw it all at you all on day one. So it's kind of like a judo class for a kid. You keep getting these different belts. you got to pay to get the belts. And if you don't get the you next belt, it. something's wrong with you. you got to pay more money to get to the next level. You got it. That's exactly how it works. Now, you'll be speaking where and when tomorrow. I will be speaking at the Tri-State Free Thinkers uh, Group at Newport on the Levee uh, in Newport, Kentucky, tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Are you in big trouble with the Scientologist? <laughs> I have been uh, excommunicated from the church. I've been declared what they call a suppressive person, and no Scientologist will ever talk to me ever again. Well, that's, that's actually, a good thing. That's a good thing, right? That's okay. <laughs> well, it, it is now, but at the time when it happened, just so you know, when I first started speaking out, I actually lost my fiancé uh, over that. She, she disconnected from me because the church forced her to, and that was, that was a very painful experience for me. If John Travolta or Tom Cruise would leave Scientology, what would happen to them? I think that that would be uh, a very big blow to Scientology because, in my opinion, the only reason that that organization is still around is because of the celebrity power of John Travolta and Tom Cruise. So you see this thing going out of existence in the next 10 or 20 years. When they age out, they're done. There's no one else coming up. I, I think so. It's, it's a little hard to predict, but I do believe that that is the case, yeah. Do you have any questions for me about world capitals, politics, sports, geomorphology, something that's confused you over the years that I can help you with? Um, <laughs> wow. Um, not really. Um, hmm. I can answer any question. Wow. Um, what's the, uh, okay, uh, sure. What's, uh, what's the cause of, what's the basic cause of conflict in the Middle East? It comes down to, at the end, generations, if not century or millennium long disputes about who has the true measure to the path to God Almighty. Is it Judaism or is it uh, Islam or Christianity? Each of the three major religions have a different path of getting to the same place. And because of the circular acts of violence, the Middle East is in a death spiral that will not be concluded until nuclear weapons are used and there's tens of millions of deaths. At the end of the day, it'll take the hand of God to solve that problem. Wow. 
Well, I think you just summarized my basic problem with organized religion. Well, I don't know. You know, I, I like mine, Roman Catholicism, but but let's face it. Uh, I the older I get, the more stupid I become, and the more experience, <laughs> yeah. the more experiences <laughs> I have. I know I don't have any. The more things I know, the less I know. The more questions I can answer, the more questions there are to ask. And uh, as I get older and more mature in life, I understand I don't have all the answers. I was a guy that many, many years ago organized efforts against gay marriage, and now I feel as if it is up to the individual to determine what their loving relationships are. Uh, I have always been firm on a right to life. I've been firm on the Second Amendment. I don't see that changing because it is a bedrock principle of not just yeah. this country, but I think of human beings. But I'm amazed at the at the invulnerabilities. I'm amazed at the culpabilities i'm amazed how people can be suckered into things based upon seeking some higher power whether it's religion or scientology or something else and uh yeah I, I, i'm amazed that people how, how many scientists are, how many scientologists are there like a few thousand or a few million oh there's there's literally about thirty thousand at the most it's a very tiny tiny cult very tiny and is it around the world or just in america no, it's international in scope. It's and the, concentrated in the United States, but it is, but they exist in the United Kingdom, Europe, Australia. But you see it dying out in 10 or 20 years. Yeah, I, I think so, yeah. I think once Miscavige, the, the current leader of the church, either passes or takes the money and runs, or what, however he goes out, I think my, my theory is that once he goes, it will collapse. And That's kind, what I kind of like the Clinton Foundation, because it's tax-exempt. They they make literally billions of dollars and don't pay taxes on anything, and as a consequence, that's how they've been able to succeed. That they had this big deal that when they got the tax exempt status from the IRS, they had a huge party in Los Angeles that went crazy because everything's free. It's like the Clintons; they get to eat free and live right. free and fly free. It's kind of like a cult. If you believe in that Clinton stuff and if you believe in Scientology, I'd examine myself a little more closely. Exactly. It definitely, Scientologists really should examine uh, their belief system and the, 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 the you know, the, Lawrence Wright had nailed it, nailed it when he said Scientology and the prison of belief, because that is what it is. All right, Chris Shelton, 27-year Scientologist. You'll be where tomorrow night at the Newport on the Levee about what time? Uh, at 7 o'clock. I'll be speaking from 7 to 9 o'clock. The truth will set you free. Chris Shelton, That's thank you right. very much. Thank you. Thank you. And by the way, do you, do you know who I am? Have you ever heard me before? I have heard of you, but I have not listened to your show. How did I do asking the questions? Oh, I thought that was great. That was really rapid fire. That was awesome. Would you mean like an A, a B, a C, a D, because you do this a lot? How, how did I do? Oh, no, I think that was an A. You, you, you asked educated questions. You didn't come off uh, not knowing what you were talking about, which is good. I know a little bit about everything and everything about nothing. <laughs> well, I liked, uh, I really liked your answer on the Middle East. That really took me by surprise. I didn't expect you to ask me a question like that. That was great. I am smart. <laughs> you are smart. Thank you. Chris Shelton, thank you very much. All right, man. Thanks. I love having on these national guests. They think I'm a backwater rube that can't think. On 700 WLW.